Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Anis Mboye here. Question. What kind of man deserves the Proverbs 31 woman? Have you ever thought about that? So recently, I was reading the famous text from Proverbs 31. I was doing the book of Proverbs for my quiet time. I got to chapter 31 and I read the wonderful text. And it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman, a wonderful woman, a wonder woman. She's an awesome wife, an awesome mother. She's earning her money. Her business is doing well. And she's really, really winging it as far as femininity is concerned. And many Christian women look at this woman and feel pressure. You know, like, oh my goodness, how do I live up to this standard? So much pressure. This woman is in her A game. She's doing really well. And at times we focus a lot on the problems that you want woman and we encourage even Christian women, rightly so. Go for that woman. Be that woman. Aspire to be that woman. But what about the men? What kind of man deserves that woman? So what happens when all the women have worked on themselves, they've worked on their marriages, they've worked on, on being this wonderful woman? What kind of man deserves to have that kind of woman? For Because she is a wonderful woman, you have to agree that. Now the answer to that is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 31, believe it or not. So when I was doing this for my quiet time, I realized the Proverbs 31 woman, her, the, the Bible talks about her from verse 10 to verse 31. However, before that, there's verse 1 to verse 9. And verse 1 to verse 9 talks about the man. And it talks about the kind of man this guy ought to be in order, I strongly believe, to deserve the Proverbs 31 woman. And so there are five things we're going to look at this passage. I'm going to challenge the men. Are you the kind of man who deserves this godly feminine woman? Do you live up to the task? And we're going to also challenge the women. As you're working on yourself, what should you look out for as far as men are concerned? Let's look at the text, Proverbs 31. It begins by saying, verse 1, the words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings or Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Finally, verse 9, open your mouth, judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. All right. So five things that make the man worthy of the Proverbs 31 woman. Number one, this young man here is called King Lemuel and he's been addressed by his mother. And some people believe that this is Bathsheba speaking to Solomon. And we perhaps can just conjecture that because the annals of the history of Israel don't give us a certain the name of a certain king called Lemuel. But he's called Lemuel and his mother is speaking to him. And this is important, gentlemen. It is a woman speaking to her son. And so she's speaking to him very soberly as a woman. She knows what women go through. She knows what women need. She knows what femininity is like. And so she's counseling you as a young man. Listen to the wives of another woman, of the kind of man that it takes to have a godly woman. And she says to him, Lemuel, listen to me. What my son? What son of my womb? What son of my vows? The first thing that I notice is that the name Lemuel means belonging to God. When I searched it out, I was surprised that this actually means belonging to God. And this is the first thing that the Proverbs 31 woman deserves out of a man. She deserves a man who's sold out to God, who belongs to God, whose identity is one who is of God. Look at his name, Lemuel. He belongs to God. What does that mean? That Lemuel is in relationship with God. That he does not deserve a relationship with his creator's creation before he has a relationship with the creator himself. Did you get that? Gentlemen, you are not worthy of a relationship with the creation if you don't have a relationship with the creator. Why should you handle his creation and yet you don't have a relationship with him? And the Bible is telling us that he belongs to God. And we can see that his mother gave himself, uh, gave, 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 gave him this name and to the dedication from the womb that the mother had always longed for Lemuel to walk with God. He belongs to God. And so the question is, do you have a personal relationship with God? Are you in touch with your creator? Have you submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? And are you in relationship with him? Does your life bear fruit? And this is important because the Proverbs 31 woman is described as a godly woman. 
And this is important for the women to notice because the one who's called Lemuel belongs to God. Therefore, the Proverbs 31 woman and Lemuel are one. They share the same spiritual value system. Ladies, do not yoke yourself to a man who does not share your spiritual value system. Don't yoke yourself to a man who does not honor God. Don't place yourself under the authority of a man who is not under the authority of God. Gentlemen, are you under the authority of God? And the way a man proves he's under the authority of God is that he submits to God and his obedience in his, in his life. He lives out that, that life. He lives out, those, he lives out the virtues and the values that are professed. He does not profess them with his tongue. They are sin. We do not rate men by what they attempt. We rate men by what they accomplish. And the question is, have you submitted yourself to God for a relationship with him? Gentlemen, you have no place in being with the creation if you don't have a relationship with the creator. Number two, the Bible says, do not give your strength to women. So he's told, listen, watch out for women. Watch out for women. They are beautiful. They are attractive. They are, they are, they are, they are alluring. You see them on the streets. And what has he been warned? He's been warned about his sexual appetite. So this is the second thing about the man who deserves the problem for one woman. He's a man who is in control of his sexual appetites. He's a man who has tempered himself. This man is a protector of the purity of the Proverbs 31 woman. He is not a plunderer of the purity of the Proverbs 31 woman. This man honors biblical purity. This man does not make excuses to defile her. He makes a reason to defend her. He defends her honor. He does not defile her honor. This is a man who gives himself over to righteousness. He does not just protect the Proverbs 31 woman from other men. He protects this woman from himself. Are you a man who's devoted to purity? This is a man who understands that purity is tied to destiny. This is a man who understand that, understands that, as my friend Bonfas Nganga says, that his consecration increases his concentration. That the more consecrated a life he lives, the more concentrated his vision in life will, will be. And it is true, I see it all the time in ministry, men who do not honor their sexuality, who don't live in purity, they lose vision when it comes to the women that they lead. And ladies, don't marry a man, don't join yourself to a man who will not honor purity. And don't make excuses for it. You know, I was talking to a lady this week who was telling me, oh, Ernest, my boyfriend, I really love him. And I keep telling him I want to walk in purity. I want to do the right thing. But he's constantly inviting me to his hostel. That's the place where we have our dates. And we constantly are falling into fornication. And I said, have you told him you don't want to meet for dates? They said, yes, I've told him. But he keeps saying, oh, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't like going out. So we have to meet in the hostel. I told that lady, run, 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 run. That is not a man who's out to protect you. That is, out, that is a man who's out to plunder you. And this is the reality. When a man has his way with a woman sexually, the interest he has for her disappears. The zeal he has for life disappears. And a woman would be hard-pressed to try and remain with a man who is plundering her purity and hope that that man will lead her. Have a man who leads you into the vision he has for life, not leads you to the bedroom. Gentlemen, are you in control of your sexual appetites? Are you a man who says, you know what? You are going to live in self-control and you are going to live in a way that you are tempered by your appetites. You are not going to be enslaved by your appetites. This is the kind of man who deserves the Proverbs 31 woman. Thirdly, the Bible tells us, so do not give your strength to women. Know your ways to that which destroys kings. So he's told Lemuel, don't go down the path where kings are destroyed. Question, how are kings destroyed? You read any history and you'll find that the downfall of kings in history was often twofold. Number one, pride. And the pride was because they were lone rangers. They thought that they could, they, they could live life by themselves. Number two, bad counsel. They surrounded themselves with the wrong kind of company. And you're being warned here, young man, that if you want to have a worthwhile life, avoid the trap of pride. Gentlemen, you do not deserve the problems that you want woman if you're a lone ranger. If you're not under the subject of other godly men, if you are not under the company of other godly men, men sharpen men. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. And therefore, a man who walks alone is a blunt man. He's not a sharp man. <laughs> not very intelligent, right? 
The men who really thrive and the men who really make an impact, the men who really lead women well are men who are accountable to other men. They're men who can be called out. Gentlemen, who calls you out when you misbehave? Who calls you out when you mistreat the woman that you have? Ladies, when you are... When your guy misbehaves, is he accountable to men? Is he submitted to men who can keep him in check? Are they men of virtue? Are they men who live out their values? Are they men of integrity, men of honor? Are they men who are admirable? Are they men who are godly? The kings are destroyed on account of pride. Pride says, I don't need men around me. I can do well by myself. And at times there are some people who even spiritualize. They say, I don't need men. I'm accountable to God. Nonsense. Come on, God put people here on earth to be accountable with other people. No man thrives alone. No man thrives alone. The Proverb 31 woman deserves a man who's surrounded by other men. Secondly, the Proverbs that are still under that point, huh? the Proverbs 31 woman deserves a man who's not in the company of bad men. Because kings are brought down by bad counsel. Bad counsel tells them, hey, you know what? Go for that war. They go for the war. They fail. Bad company. Let me tell you, gentlemen, if you are surrounded by people who are purposeless, visionless, who are directionless, guess what? You may be saying, oh, honest, you know, the five, <laughs> in fact, someone said it, you know, if the five people around you are purposeless, visionless, directionless, let me correct your math. There is six of you. And gentlemen, you could be the sixth one. People say, oh, yeah, honest, but great minds think alike, but fools hardly differ. When you see a man hang around bad company, please understand that it is only a matter of time before he behaves like those men. Either he's already behaving like them, but he's playing the hypocrite, or it's a matter of time before he goes down that direction. A man of righteousness cannot interact with men who discriminate uh who discriminate against women, who uh, hate the things of God, who uh, do not honor Christ-likeness, who do not honor masculinity, who have no control over their appetites. It's impossible. Show me your friends, I will show you who you are. Gentlemen, your friends, the people around you validate you and they tell the kind of person that you are. It doesn't matter how much you say, oh, they're this, oh, they're that, but I am different. No, you are exactly like your friends. It's just a matter of time before it shows. The Proverbs that one woman deserves a man who is a king, a king and a righteous king, a king who stands in his identity and says, I'm going to surround myself with other kings. I'm going to rule and reign and live a life that is worthwhile. Number four, the Bible says it is not for kings or lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him who is bitter, who are bitter, wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let them drink, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. The fourth characteristic of the man who deserves the Proverbs 31 woman is a man of sobriety. A man who is sober. And what does this sober mean? Number one, as 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 the pro the book of Proverbs puts it, alcohol. You shouldn't be a man who's given to alcohol. You shouldn't be a man who subjects your body to intoxication. Now it's as if the book of Proverbs waited for a backlash or waited for a rebuttal, saying, "Oh, but honest, um, but but for me, I drink and." And that's what it says in verse 6. Oh, they are those men. It says in verse 6, give strong drink to him who is perishing. So it, it, it kinda, it's, it's like it's kind of anticipating the response by men. It's like it's kind of anticipating, uh, you know, the men to get defensive with this point. So it says, oh, yeah, there are those who want to drink. Let them drink. Let them drink. That's for them. But you who's a king, you who understands that sobriety is needed, you who understands that life is short. Life is too short to get intoxicated. Life is too short to have your mind filled with alcohol. It says, you who is a king, stay away from it. The others, give strong drink to them. Let them drink. But it says, for you who is a king. And so the question is, what is your identity? Because your identity determines your behavior. Your identity determines your characteristics and the things that you engage in and you don't engage in. Sobriety here is not just even for the physical body, it's also sobriety emotionally, spiritually. Gentlemen, are you a man who's spiritually mature? Could we say that the sobriety of your spiritual health is on point? Are you a man who's given to truth and right doctrine? Would you be measured and you're not swayed by every wind of doctrine? Sobriety is also emotional. Are you a man who's emotionally stable? Are you a man who, when you're frustrated and when you're upset, you're able to keep things calm, you're able to keep things together? Why? Because you're sober. 
Are you a man who's healthy as far as his body, his soul, and his spirit is concerned? Because the sobriety, as far as alcohol is concerned, talks about his health. This is a man who takes care of his health. The sobriety, as far as emotions are concerned, that talks about the soul. A man who is able to be calm under pressure. A man who is able to be emotionally intelligent. And sobriety spiritually, the doctrine that you absorb and the doctrine, uh, the, the kind of doctrine that you hold on to. Do you hold on to true doctrine? Or are you a man or are you a person who is constantly swayed around by false teachings? Let me tell you, um, majority, of, majority of people who join cults are women. But majority, majority of people who lead cults are men. You understand that? And so we normally say, oh yes, many majority of, of people in cults are women, but majority of people who lead cults are, are men. Who are those are men who are not sober spiritually? The way to know that you are sober spiritually is that you submitted to the truth of God's word. That you defend the faith more than you defend your prophet. <laughs> are you a sober person? And a sober person is able to work out their identity. Are you constantly defending that thing that takes away your sobriety. All right? Finally, the Bible says, open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all those who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause of the poor and the needy. The fifth thing that the Proverbs 31 woman deserves is a man who lives for a cause bigger than himself. In these verses, the man is told, hey, there are speechless people out there. There are people who are poor. There are people who do not have a judge. There are people who are needy. Defend them. Fight for their cause. You need to understand that men are called to defend. Men are called to be defenders. Men are called to be avengers. Men are called to stand up. Men are called to be built for war. We are built for war. You must be built for war. And therefore, this is a man who is courageous. Because for you to live for a cause bigger than yourself, you must be courageous. Courageous men deserve the Proverbs 31 woman. The Proverbs 31 woman has no place for wimps, simps, and pimps. <laughs> Wimps, simps, and pimps. Who are wimps? Wimps are people who are too weak to stand up and do the right thing. Who are simps? Simps are people who just go with the flow. They don't have a spine of their own. They don't grow a spine. They do what the culture says. And who are pimps? Pimps are people who plunder the society. Pimps are people who attack. Pimps are people who need to be stood up to. But the righteous man stands up against the wimps, the pimps, and the sims. He stands up and says, you know what? I live for a cause bigger than myself. I don't live for myself. He's not a selfish man. A wimp is a selfish man. Why? Because he's too scared. He only looks out for himself. A simp is a selfish man. Why? He only looks out for what other people think and how it affects him. A pimp is a selfish man. Why? Because he's greedy. It's all about him. It's all about, you know what? I want to sleep with so many women. You know, he glories in the number of women he slept with. He glories in the things that he does to disenfranchise others and he thinks it makes him a man. No, it makes him a fool. But a man, a real man, a God-fearing man, a man's man is a man who lives for a cause bigger than himself. Gentlemen, are you this kind of man? Do you deserve the Proverbs 31 woman? Belonging to God, taming his sexual appetites, a king who's not destroyed by lone ranger mentality and who's not destroyed by bad company, a sober man, and a man who lives a cause bigger than himself, bigger than what self offers. Gentlemen, examine yourselves, ladies, Kindly look at the men around you. And this is not just a test to graduate into getting the Proverbs 31 woman. These are standards that every man, even married ones like myself, ought to uphold with the wonderful women that God has given us. Challenge accepted? You let me know. Till next time.